So once again I got this great comment from you in the comment section to make a lesson on the song The Empty's Response which was part of the Ataxia project with John Frusciante, uh, Josh Klinghoffer and uh, Joe Lally. And I thought I would approach this lesson a bit differently so I will first provide you tabs for some figures to learn your no note, note for note but then I will give an ear exercise for the solos uh, followed by an explanation of the structure of the song uh, so you understand how it works, so you can practice your own improvisations of a backing track that I'll provide. And the reason for this structure is because, as you can read here if you pause the video, uh, the Ataxa project was meant to be like an improvisation thing and not really meant to be recorded, so there are a lot of improvisations and a lot of guitars added here and there, and I don't really think the purpose or the goal is to learn everything note for note, but rather understand the general structure of the song and how it works and then practice your own improvisations on it. And the songs as you could read in the quote there uh, typically started with uh, a bass line and in this case it was a very simple bass line with four notes that were repeating over and over in the song and the notes were uh, first this note then this note and this one and then this one and for each of those four notes uh, you have a chord and the chords are a, but you don't play the whole A chord, but you, you focus on these three notes. So the root here is an E, so A over E chord. And then you have your C sharp minor, but again you focus on these three notes. And the root here, G sharp, so C sharp minor over G sharp. And then you have the C sharp diminished chord. Uh, but you don't have the root here like you traditionally do. So with this voicing, the root is the G. So C sharp diminished over G. And finally you have a D major 7 chord with this voicing. And with this voicing it sounds like, you know, it has like a lot of tension in it. So compare this to a more normal voicing like this. Here it's, you know, has a lot less tension, which I thought was a quite interesting thing to point out. But anyway, so we have the root here, the F sharp, so this is a D major 7 over F sharp. But you don't play the chords exactly like that, but rather you pick them and there are a lot of improvisations in the picking pattern. Uh, and I will teach you three figures uh, of that pattern which should give you a general idea of how the structure works and for like the first half of the song or something like that you mostly have the first figure that I will teach you and then uh, for the rest of the song the other half or something like that you have uh, like two different patterns which I will also teach you but like I said within these patterns that I will teach you there are a lot of improvisations that you can try to figure out by ear later. So yeah, what I will do now is to play each pattern two times with taps. And now we get to the soloing and I have picked the two major solos of the song but before we jump into that I want to address the uh, signature, the key signature and I use the A major uh, scale, you know, based on the first chord of the progression 
but I found that that doesn't work completely. And that is because you add this flat seven interval into the scale. And because of that, I guess you should define the scale as a mix between major and minor, or you can say that you switch key uh, in the soling. And the reason for that is that the four chords that we talked about, three of those chords fit within the A major scale, but the diminished chord, and this one, doesn't fit within the scale. And the thing is that when you play this chord uh, three out of four times in the soling, you hit that flat seven interval. So that can be a good clue now when you will actually try to figure this solo out by ear. And what I will do now is to play the two solos first without showing what I play, uh, only showing the scale. And then I will show you what I play together with the scale. So yeah, here we go. So now we hopefully got the solos down and together with the understanding of the song and you know the key change that occurs there between major and minor, I will now encourage you to practice your own improvisation over a backing track that I'll provide at the end of this video. But first I thought I would show you my improvisation that I did to kind of give you some ideas and I would like to add that this was like the most fun part for me uh, when learning this song because now I could really put everything together I learned in the song to make my own thing and that was really really fun. So. Yeah, let's take a listen to that. So yeah, hopefully that inspires you to create your own improvisation and I will provide this backing track at the end of this video. And in the description I will have a download link for uh, the backing track and the tabs that show in this uh, video. And now it would be really interesting if you want to share what improvisations you come up with either here on YouTube or on Instagram, uh, which you can follow me if you want. And yeah, with that said, I'd like to thank you very much for watching this lesson and hopefully you learned something valuable and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video and now here is the backing track.